Good morning, church. It's Saturday morning. Take your Bibles, and we're going to go again to Ephesians in chapter number five. We've looked at this verses many times over the number of de devotions we've done. It seems like it's one that we go to uh, more often than, than many scriptures. But in Ephesians chapter number five, he talks about a family. He talks about roles and responsibilities. Now, before we get into the roles and responsibilities, I'm just going to simply talk a little bit about what I have noticed in strong families. What I've seen as far as a pastor in my own family and in the, the families that I know of, uh, what is it that is really usually a characteristic that makes a strong family? Well, I want you to begin in chapter number five. It says that we are in verse 21. We're submitting to one another in the fear of God. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now he's talking about there, and I realize this, the family of God. In the church, we're submitting unto one another in the fear of God. Having a family that fears God, having a family that is uh, often in worship with God, uh, they take their Bibles, they take their kids, they get to church, they're involved in church activities, uh, they're, they're more than just going to church, they bring church home with them. They're, they are the church. They do daily devotions. They do these sort of things. Those are characteristics that I see in strong families. Now, I recognize there could be people who do all those things and their family still just is dysfunctional, falls apart, very difficult. But that's usually the, the key to it is when mama has a good relationship with Jesus and dad has a good relationship with Jesus and it's a growing relationship, they're spending time in Bible study privately and together and they're spending time in prayer and they themselves are growing individuals when that is true then usually the family will follow suit the kids will be involved in those things and respect those things as well now here are five things that i see in most families that are strong families number one there's a love a concern a kindness and compassionate that dominates the way they treat one another that they're not always picking on one another. They're not always putting one another down. And I realize that can be kind of a joking thing to begin with. A man and his wife maybe pick at one another and just joke and make stabbing remarks at one another. But that gets old quick. And, and, and it gets beyond sometimes uh, the idea of love and just being kidding around. And so we have to be very careful. Uh, when we are, if we are a child of God, then we have to show all people kindness and compassion in order to dominate who we are out in society. But that's never more true than in the family, the concern that we have for one another, watching out over one another. That's what I see in strong families. Another thing, forgiveness and acceptance are administered wisely in families. There has to be an abundance of forgiveness in a family, a husband and wife, my goodness, if you don't have forgiveness for one another, you're going to always be at odds. You're always going to keep score. You know, he did this, she did this. and the, You know, and every time there's an argument, every time there's a little fuss, you're going to bring up all the past and all the things that someone's ever done to you. We need to get beyond that and recognize we're all sinners, we all make mistakes, and we're all in great need of forgiveness. But it's administered wisely. In a family... We don't just keep saying, I forgive him, I forgive him. If a man, God forbid, is hitting his wife or beating his wife, uh, and she just keeps forgiving him, that's not a positive thing. That, that's not wise uh, to do that. Uh, that. There's no repentance there. There's no remorse there. There's no quitting the nonsense. It's, it's uh, When we administer forgiveness in a family, it needs to be even towards the kids administered wisely, understanding we're all humans, and when someone repents, Jesus said 70 times 7, we're to, we're to forgive them. But we need to do it wisely. But there needs to be an abundance of forgiveness. Number three, in strong families, I see a respect and a politeness towards one another. Again, I a family, even though they may stay together, sometimes the the kids can be rude to one another, rude to their parents. The husband can be rude to his wife. The wife can be rude to her husband. Uh, where has politeness gone 
You know, where, where in our culture uh, did we think that it was uh, impol that impoliteness was, was the way to go? But it's become that. And in strong families, what I see is not only a love and concern for one another, a forgiveness of one another, but treating one another politely and with, with respect. A, a fourth thing, accountability for all to all. That there's accountability of the husband to the wife. I mean, he's accountable for where he's at and where he's going and for what he's doing. Uh, she's accountable to the husband. The kids are accountable to the parents. I mean, when the wife is going off and doing her thing, the husband going off and doing his thing, neither one of them accountable, knowing what the other one is doing, eventually that will break down. And the same is true about the kids. The kids need to be accountable to the parents. There needs to be this idea that we're one, and if you're going to be late for dinner, call and tell me. It's, you know, we, we have that kind of relationship in our family, and it keeps everybody from being overly concerned as well, but there's a great deal of accountability there where they, people can't get too far off the beaten path without being called back. And then again, probably the biggest one is a strong emphasis on Christian discipleship. I find even families that go to church regularly and maybe they've never been through a divorce. You've got a husband and wife and they've got three kids and they go to church regularly. But if there's not a strong emphasis in the home on Christian discipleship, they may stay together, but they're going to probably fuss and fight. They're, they're not going to grow. They're, they're not going to fulfill their roles as husband and wife as they ought to. The kids are probably going to be rebellious because things aren't being modeled for them in the home. And so that's what makes for a strong family. If you're needing help on that, give me a call. I'll be glad to help you walk through that. We've, we raised our five kids, and we were fortunate with God's help that our kids remained in the faith and continue on this day to have a great relationship with one another and great relationship with us and, and following the Lord. And so if there's any way that I can help you in, in that walk, give me a call, all right? Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you that we have families that we can go home to, that we can be a part of, that we don't have to be alone. We do pray for those who may not have families that, Father, they'll be able to find and unite together with a, a strong family where they can find the support system they need. Uh, Father, we do pray that as we uh, go through this study that you'll help us to be mindful of the fact that, that uh, we don't need to just hear these things, but Father, we need to be doers of these things. So help us to be kind and gentle and polite and forgiving of one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.